Okay, we're back. So now that you've set up your custom tracking domain, it's time to create your first legit tracking link. So in the previous video, I did an example of your test tracking link, so I'm gonna delete that. And before I create a new link, I want to get this a little more organized. So this is my sales page. This is the link right here, Coding OCPA sales page 63FXRP1. So I don't want it to look like that. I want it to be, oops. So I didn't want it to look like that. I wanted to, I wanted the end of it to be CLA safflower oil. So I'm gonna update the funnel step. So now you can see it's a little more neat and it says codinos or cpa.com slash CLA safflower oil. But when you preview it, It'll give you a sales page 26268199. I don't want that to look like this either. So you might be thinking, I thought you just changed it. But actually, this is just the main link. And these, okay, once we have a split test going, there will be another one over here. These all have different ending paths as well. So ideally, I would want this to be labeled CLA Safflower Oil version one or a V1 at the end of it. And then when I do my split test, I will have V2 at the end of it. So I'm going to edit page. You can also name it whatever, CLA V1. And then I'm going to label it the exact same as the main link. And then just do a dash V1. And then I'm going to update page. So now when I view this link, it brings me to volume one right here. So now that we have that organized, I am going to show you how to create your first tracking link. So HTTPS, you know, CLA Safflower Oil. This is the link you wanna grab. I'm going to create a new link. Okay, so I just labeled the link name CLA Safflower Oil and it's track.codinocpa slash CLA Safflower primary URL is this URL right here. And then I'm going to click save. Now we have our first legit tracking link set up. So I'm going to, I am going to copy this and I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to add some example sub IDs. I'll just go one, two, three. And this might seem confusing to you right now, but these are essentially what we are going to be tracking when people are clicking our tracking links. So I'm going to click enter and look at that. It didn't bring us to this URL, it brought us to this. Remember it goes through this and then it lands on this because they do that for split testing purposes. So CodyNoCPA.com, you notice it doesn't say track anymore. It redirected us to the actual landing page that we got. And now if I come over here and refresh, I was, on, I was on February 5th, but okay. So I refreshed it and I got a unique click. So when I expand this, I should be able to see those sub IDs that I put at the end of it. And with click magic, it only shows sub ID one, but then if you hover over this eye with a circle in it, there's it shows you five sub IDs. So we got one, two and three, those are the three that I put at the end of the tracking link. So when we're creating our Bing campaigns, we're gonna to put tokens where I just put the one, two, three, we're gonna to put tokens that are, that are the keyword, the query string, the add ID, and this is gonna be data that we get to dissect and see which keywords are converting for us. So it shows me the sub IDs and the unique clicks. So pretty cool, right? I'm going to come and clear my stats Clear my stuff. So very simple stuff, but now I need to add something to the end of our primary URL. And what I need to add is a question mark, S1 equals bracket click ID. And the reason I do this is because now that I have this query string at the end of it, that question mark S1 equals click ID, the, there will be a number that shows up at the end of the landing page, and this is gonna be crucial for tracking sales through a postback URL. 
That might sound confusing if you're new to all this, but it's actually not that complicated. So I'm going to save. And now the next time I do the test, instead of it saying CodingNoCPA.com CLA Safflower Oil Volume 1, there will be a question mark with some numbers following it. So let's test it out. I'm going to copy, paste, and I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. Remember, there's up to five sub IDs that you can track. And that's just for a test. Okay, so because we had S1 equals click ID right here, this is the unique click ID that is so crucial for tracking sales. And I'm going to be going in depth in this in the future videos. But just remember, you're going to always always want the click ID the and or the question mark s1 equals click ID and then for this and then for it to be a nine digit number after the equal sign so that's simple simple stuff so far and I think that's where I'm going to end this video I'm going to refresh the stats one more time and I'm going to show you that I'm go I should have five sub IDs that tracked on this click and it should be in order one, two, three, four, five, because that's what I tested. So I got one, two, three, four, five. And then in the future, we're gonna have tokens in there for the keywords and the ad IDs and the ad groups that will replace these numbers that I just put in. Okay, so that will be it for this video. Uh, Rewatch it a couple times if you are confused at all, because if you don't have your tracking set up properly, you're not going to be successful with CPA marketing. I'll be honest. You need to know which keywords, which ad campaigns are working for you and which aren't working for you so you can eliminate the bad ones and focus on the good campaigns. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.